So you're interested in this one here? Yeah, yeah. So we have an open source router here. Yes, we do. Uh, we've got an M2 slot. Mm -hmm. There's a micro bus uh, port as well, so you can add peripherals and you can, um, you know, add sensors and things like that to it. It also has a JTAG port right here for people who like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you don't need to solder anything to get the JTAG. It's got a place for a battery in case you want to keep the clock going while it's powered down. And then on the front, we have a USB serial port. Okay. So you don't have to solder anything on to get uh, serial for diagnosing or recovering the device. Um, and then on the back here, we've got this 2.5 gigabit port and you can get power over Ethernet if you like to use that, or you can power it with USB-C if you prefer. Uh, you can also switch between the two different flash that are on here, the NAND and the NOR. If you happen to flash something incorrect onto both of them and need to recover it, there's also um, a little bit of code burned into the device so that you can recover both of those if they're both uh, corrupted for some reason. So it's unbrickable. Wow, yeah. this is really cool. And then in terms of like what software it runs uh, yeah. on it. So. so it ships with OpenWRT out okay. of the box. And we also ship with complete source code, which you can download from the website okay. um, or ask us about if you want. So we really wanted to show other router manufacturers that it is not that hard to provide complete source code, which gives you the freedom to modify and repair your device, yeah. which is required when you use Linux. And so we're frustrated some companies don't give you that. We wanted to show you that it is easy to do, very possible. Okay. Well, because like at this point, router companies, the answer I believe is you don't want to. And since it's all open source, I'm assuming like a company like PF Sense could probably also oh, make, yeah, a, absolutely. make a port over. Oh yeah, That's partly why we're we have it branded as the one. We don't yeah. want it to seem like this is only for OpenWRT, yeah. although it ships with OpenWRT out of the box. But yeah, totally. If PF Sense wants to adapt things to run super well on the one, we're super happy for that. Anyone who wants to run their free and open source distribution on yeah. here, please go right ahead. Is the hardware also open source or no? That's just so the hardware, we do have a bunch of stuff online for the hardware. If you go to this website here, uh, one.openwrt.org slash sources, it has not only the source code for the software, but also schematics for the hardware. So you can check that out, see exactly how we wired everything up. Yeah, so we're making uh, it as open as possible. I mean, I don't know what to say other than it's just... This is a great option. Okay, and you said it does the 2.5 out, and I'm assuming you would just hook that up to a, a switch, yeah. yep. and then you can get that 2.5 2.5 gig out. Uh, That's right, yeah, it all depends how you want to use it. Like, if you have particularly fast fiber, you can just plug the, the fiber directly into here and get that up to 2.5 gigabits on that. Um, and then you can connect it to a switch to distribute it more. So yeah, we really wanted to keep the price point low on this. Yeah. Uh, this is 89 US dollars. Um, and so if you want a switch or something, you can add that. But we wanted to make sure, you know, people could really buy this thing if they wanted yeah. to. One interesting thing that you can do with the one is 3D print your own custom chassis for it to maybe fit in a home server or home lab. And if you're looking for high quality custom 3D prints, then let's talk about PCBWay. PCBWay is your go-to source for custom 3D printing services, offering top-notch quality and super fast turnaround times. Let's dive right into how you can easily order your custom 3D print from PCBWay. First, head over to their website, pcbway.com. On the homepage, navigate to the 3D printing section. Choose the material and printing technique that best fits your needs. Whether it's PLA, ABS, or resin, PCBWay has got you covered. Next, upload your 3D model file. PCBWay accepts popular formats like STL and OBJ, making it super easy to get started. Their instant cost estimation tool will give you a quote right away so you know exactly what to expect. No surprises. Once you're happy with your choices, Proceed to checkout and place your order. PCBWay's team of experts will handle the rest, ensuring your 3D print meets the highest standards of quality. In no time, you'll have your custom 3D print delivered to your doorstep, ready to bring your ideas to life. So what are you waiting for? Visit PCBWay.com today to start your 3D printing journey. PCBWay, your partners in innovation. I, I think I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna buy one. I'm going to buy one, and I'm gonna do a dedicated video on this thing because awesome. this, is amazing, and then I, I bet I can even get uh, Cameron, my co-host, he'll, 
probably also to buy one because the idea of something like this and not being stuck a lot of isps they'll provide you with a with a combo gateway router i hate that by the way yeah, it totally. yeah we really recommend you just replace that with this or if you can't replace it put it in bridge mode and then put this one as the thing that controls your routing and then and then the wi-fi uh with the wi-fi standard is it wi-fi 6e or it's wi-fi 6. okay so this one has wi-fi 6 and Later this year, we expect to come out with the OpenWRT2, which will support Wi-Fi 7. It will have two 10 gigabit ports um, and a bunch of 2.5 gigabit ports. It will, of course, be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if someone wants super powerhouse, that's yeah. coming out later this year. Do you have a ballpark for how much more expensive that one will be? Uh, it's really hard to say right now. Okay. You know, I don't want to say too much. Maybe around 250 or something, but okay. it could be lower. It could be a bit higher. Hard to say. That's reasonable. That's very reasonable, especially if you're getting 10 gigabit and Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 is great. Wi-Fi for years has been kind of eh sometimes. I've used a couple Wi-Fi 7 devices. It's built different. But just this, as as a that's a great budget option. You know, there's a lot of routers out there. Routers, are, routers can be expensive. Having an open source option that not is only affordable, but you have an expectation that you can swap out your software if, if something's not working quite right to you and kind of adjust your experience a little bit better, that's perfect. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really what we wanted. We wanted this to be accessible so people can buy it. You don't have to pay a premium for something yeah. that gives you all these freedoms. So yeah, that's why we picked this price point and picked this hardware. I'm just like, I'm already like thinking of what I can do. I have this watch here. It's the Pine Time. Yeah, it's awesome it's, it's yeah. KVM for this stuff with this. That would be really cool. Yeah, that's what's great. You can add storage to do more complicated operating systems on here. Yeah. Um, you can add hardware if you want, like Bluetooth or something else to communicate with those sorts of devices. The world is your oyster. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, well, thank you, De Denver. Yeah, Denver. That's right. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm Andrew. Um, and then there's obviously the Software Freedom Conservancy stuff over here with it. Yeah, that's right. So. We work at Software Freedom Conservancy at the booth here, and OpenWRT is one of our projects. And so we do the things that they want us to do, like help out make this router here. And we thought this is such an awesome idea because it really fits in with what we do as an organization, which is making sure that people get their software freedom. We promote that by supporting projects that are free and open source, and also by building hardware now so that you can get these freedoms in a practical sense in your hardware. I, I can take one of these, right? Awesome. And then, and then do. yeah, copy left compliance. Yep. All right, can you go ahead and explain what copy left compliance is? Yeah, absolutely. So copy left is a type of license that gives you rights. It gives you the right to uh, modify and reinstall software onto your device. And so a lot of companies use Linux, which is under a copy left license, but they don't give you those rights. And that mm -hmm. is against the license. And sometimes, when that happens, uh, we need to sue them because when we talk to them nicely, they just refuse to do it. So that's another one of the things we do at Software Freedom Conservancy is we get your rights by, if necessary, suing companies to get those rights. Because it's pretty simple, the license that Linux uses says you need to give all the rights that we, the software developers, provided to you onto the people you are selling the device to. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, a good faith mixed with good legality kind exactly. of thing. Exactly, you and got it. You want people to kind of get in, be a part of that. And, yeah. and if they're not, if they're gonna like be like, yeah, and then, you know, but not this, it, right. it kind of upsets you a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the bargain is there for a reason. Uh, it's a reciprocal agreement. We give you this code with all these rights. You pass those rights on when you give it to someone else. Pretty simple. Uh, you know, Denver, uh, thank you so much for talking to me. You're so welcome. Th this is this is all really great. I'm gonna have to keep up with this stuff. I, I saw you guys like on the list for uh, when I was looking at the scale website, mm -hmm. and I was just like, what is this? There's you know, and I, I'm glad I, I came showed up to the booth and I found out. That's amazing. Thank you so much.